Kit Langton did it again. He wrote another one of those cute little CLI tools. And guys, I have a confession. I love CLI tools, especially the colorful ones. In fact, in the next video, I'm gonna show you one of my own, but let's not get ahead of ourselves and play with this one first. Hey, Vlad here from devinside.com. Welcome to another video. Today, I just want to make a super quick demo of a nice little tool that Kit Lenton created. He's the guy behind awesome tools like Zeo Magic, Parallel 4 Comprehensions, and many others. It parses your build, allows you to interactively choose which dependencies you want to update, and well, it goes ahead and updates them for you, including the SBT version. Now, I know, I know, there's Scala Steward, but can you just be cool for a second? It's a nice CLI tool. All right, now let's have a look right after the message from our sponsors, which is awesome people like you who support me on Patreon. With your help, I'm able to pay for a video editor who frees some of my time, which I then choose to spend again with you, whether it's during live streams or answering your questions on Discord. Thank you for contributing to free tech education. And if you're not part of the gang yet, I would like you to know that all it takes is a dollar. It adds up. All right, now before we get started, I'd like everyone to be on the same page. It's a brand new tool, so it's a little bit rough around the edges. And if you're not on the Mac, as of right now, you have to build it on your own, which is not a big deal. We're gonna run through it real quick. There's nothing preventing it from being built for other systems. It just hasn't been done yet. So consider sending a PR. In fact, I originally thought that it would be just an SBT plugin, but no, it's a standalone native image. Since it's so young, in case it's not obvious, it's not bulletproof. I took a look at the code. It just parses the build files. It even supports mill, but I actually couldn't get it to work with mill. Also, I found an issue with string interpolation. The parser currently misses it. As I already mentioned, it's a brand new tool, so there's a lot of work to be done, but it's already pretty cool, so let's have a look, shall we? All right, now I already have it open over here. As you can see, it's just Kit Lantern Scala Update. So as you can see, if you have Homebrew, you can actually just install it like this. I also found the Homebrew formula, which as you can see, it simply goes to the, um, you know, to the releases page, to the downloads, and then there's a native image that is already built for Mac OS. By the way, Homebrew also works on Linux. However, as you can see, it, uh, you know, there's just no native image uh, that was built for Linux yet. But we're going to build it locally, and, uh, you know, if you can uh, build it with GitHub Actions or something, please consider uh, submitting a PR. Let's go back real quick over here so we are going to build a native image locally which means that we need graal vm luckily i have graal vm installed here are a couple of instructions with how you can install it using sdk man many people uh love sdk man i've never actually used it uh not because it's a bad tool it's just because i never had a, a use case for it so uh i have always had uh, graal vm installed and uh my uh you know my poison is the nix package manager and it already comes with the uh native image part of the graal vm if you're using it you know if using SDK man or any other installation method, you need to make sure that you run this command. Uh, GU stands for like Graal VM updater or something. It's an internal tool of the Graal VM and it can install uh, optional components, which is a native image. I already have it, so I don't need to do any of that, okay? So all we need to do is we need to clone this project and we just need to basically run this command, okay? So uh, let me go grab it over here. I'm gonna use the GitHub CLI and I have a video about it. So this is my Ubuntu 2004, my WSL distribution, the one that I'm using in most of uh, my videos. So what I'm gonna do is um, I prefer whenever I clone GitHub repositories, I prefer to have like a GitHub uh, directory structure that mimics, you know, what is actually on GitHub, okay? So I'm gonna go like this, take dev GitHub, github slash kit langton like this if you're not familiar take basically creates this entire directory structure whether it exists or not okay so now we're here so now i'm just going to paste this command over here right very important not to forget to actually switch directory into a scala update okay and now this is a typical sbt project uh, i'm using the power level 10k prompt as you can see like there's a there's java over here 1704 um so we need to like copy this command, but actually all we need is to do, we need to say sbt and then grab vm native image colon package bin, or we can use the newest syntax. I'm actually going to show you the newest syntax. So you just do sbt and then it's case sensitive, grab vm native image. Okay. And now instead of the column, we're going to do slash and we're going to do scala update. I'm sorry. We're going to say package bin, package bin. There we go. Okay. Now. This thing is going to take a while. Remember that awesome video editor that I mentioned in the beginning of the video is actually going to help me to speed it up so that you don't have to wait for any of this stuff. All right, now, as you can see, it took around two and a half minutes while I was recording. So if I'm not recording, this would even be faster and I'm on a four year old laptop. And as you can see, the image is now over here in target update Graal VM Scala update. So if we were to do, you know, which uh, Scala update, we're going to see that I don't have it on the path. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a pseudo copy and we're going to go for like target, you know, Graal VM native image, Scala update, and we're going to put it into somewhere on the path. 
for example, over there. Okay, so I need to enter my password real quick. And if I do which Scala update, ta -da, I have Scala update. All right, so now we need some guinea pig. And I think we're going to go with the uh, shopping cart application that we have rewritten uh, into the diamond architecture. This is the application written by Gabriel Volpe in the book Practical Functional Programming in Scala. So I'm on some, uh, some of my older branches. So I'm just going to clear the screen and I'm just going to type Scala update. And in just a couple of seconds, it's going to show me all of the things that we can update. There we go. Now I'm currently using uh, Windows Terminal, which is why like some of these colors are like a little bit darker. I'm actually going to switch to Alacrity uh, just to show you um, how it can also uh, look like. So I'm going to go like this, PFP again, and I'm going to run the scale updates again like this. So it's going to look just a little bit brighter. Uh, obviously, like all of these like uh, CLI tools, they really depend on, uh, you know, what the terminal is. Doing, okay. So as you can see, like these are all the updates there's a legend with all of the things that you can press for example space uh, you can toggle like one of the things and as you can see like once it's selected it's like uh, underlined over here and there's a checkbox over here now you can also press a to select like all of them press a again to deselect all of them okay now you can have g to show the groups those those are the uh, you know the maven groups not like these kind of groupings okay so it looks like this so these two are like from type level but there are also other ones from type level right if we were to choose this one then it would update cat score and cat's laws uh, to this version okay so for example what we're going to do now and by the way you can use like j and k to go up and down uh you can also use the arrow keys uh you cannot use h and l to go like left and right like over here for example like if i'm pressing like left and right it actually goes like patch and pre-release -re -pre but if i do h l like it would do in vim it actually doesn't okay so when you have choices you can go like this okay so for example in this particular case i'm just going to go like this right so select everything and notice how like this one is underlined and it's called patch. So if I go right, it will actually take this one, which is a pre-release. Okay. So I'm going to choose this one and it looks like everything else. I'm actually kind of happy with everything else over here. We have a choice between minor and pre-release. We're going to stay with minor. Okay. And that's it. And now I'm going to press enter over here and it's going to create this diff over here which is exactly, you know, what is expected. And if we were to like run it again, Scala update, we're going to see that only a couple of updates are left, right? Only cat's effect, right? In fact, during the preparation for this video, I actually had uh, one more, uh, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so we're just going to press space. We're going to press enter. Okay, so now it generates this diff. Okay, as you can see, it shows like this one. And now I'm going to run it one more time to show you that it also um, says that, you know, there are no dependency updates. Okay, as I already mentioned, sometimes it misses actually a couple. And by the way, don't forget um, to notice that it also updates the SBT version over here even adds a new line, which is nice. Now, as I already mentioned, occasionally it misses something, but it's just a matter of time. I'm sure it's going to be fixed. Uh, also, like it's also going to be published for all the, all the other platforms. It's just a matter of time. By the way, guys, if you have me seen like using shortcuts that you didn't understand, I would like you to know that I have videos about all of this kind of stuff, right? I have videos about ZSH, all my ZSH, FZF, the GitHub CLI, uh, Biobu, all kinds of things. In fact, I actually kind of forgot to show you one of them. So if I do like Z Scala update, right, it's just going to go uh, back to this uh, repository. And if I to show you that I have an alias called FGCOR, uh, which is not the alias that I wanted to show you. I actually wanted to show you this one with a T. T stands for uh, for the flags. Okay, so GCO is just Git checkout, and G is just Git. Okay, so if I do FGCOT, because like what, what just happened is we built whatever was in master. Okay, however, like these are all the tags, and so for example, if I do a two two, like this is going to be the last tag. Okay, so maybe this is the one that we should have been uh, been building. Okay, and the tool that that you that you just saw was FZF. I have videos about all of these kinds of things, so you might want to check them out. I hope you enjoyed this super quick demo, and I see you in the next one. For now, as always, it's been Vlad from DevInsideYou.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did. Subscribe if you are serious about improving the developer inside you, and if you wish to contribute to free tech education and have the means, consider doing so on GitHub sponsors or Patreon. And let's watch my videos before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.